Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. This time out, we're looking at two modeling microphones from Universal Audio. Let's get started. Now, if I can take you back seven or eight years ago, I was at a Winter NAMM show in Anaheim, California, and I was invited to a, a private session at a hotel room off the campus to check out a new technology from a brand new company called Townsend Labs. And what they were showing was a very early prototype of a modeling microphone that later went on to become the L22, which is a very powerful modeling microphone. If we fast forward to 2016, that microphone was commercially released and it's been, as I mentioned, super popular since. Now, if we fast forward to 2021, Universal Audio acquired Townsend Labs and now has the Sphere DLX and the Sphere LX microphones. Now, these are modeling microphones in the tradition of the Townsend microphone. So each of these microphones is actually a very neutral large diaphragm condenser. And we're gonna talk more about that and how these work and the differences between them as well. You pair those with a plug-in and you can basically apply the characteristics of up to 38 different microphones onto the sound from these microphones to optimize the tone for your particular track. But it actually goes further than that because with the Sphere system, with the plug-in, you can also modify the polar pattern. You can change the off-axis characteristics. In fact, with the DLX, you can even record in stereo. So let's take a deeper dive into these microphones and what you can do with them. The magic of the Sphere microphones is there are actually two identical diaphragms inside each of these microphones. And the way the Sphere system works is it manipulates those two diaphragms to create different polar patterns, to give you different off-axis characteristics and more. So that's really the key to this is those gold sputtered diaphragms. Now, as I mentioned, these are very high quality microphones just on their own. If you put either of these microphones up in front of a source, they sound fantastic. Gold sputtered large diaphragm condenser. We've got 7 dB of self noise here, extremely quiet. With the LX, which is a little less expensive microphone, a little smaller for easier placement, we've got 10 dB of self noise, still extremely quiet. So these are gonna work very well on delicate sources, acoustic guitar, classical guitar, delicate percussion instruments, strings, horns. You could put them on drums, and of course they're gonna be fantastic on vocals as well, as we'll see later in this video. The differences between the two microphones. The DLX comes with 38 different microphone models. As I mentioned, it has 7 dB of self noise, and it's actually set up to where you can record stereo with this single microphone. It comes with a 25 foot cable, as well as a carrying case, and it also includes a shock mount in the package. When we go to the LX, it's a smaller microphone, as I mentioned, easier to place, 10 dB of self noise, comes with a 10 foot cable in a carrying case, as well as a microphone mount. The other difference with the LX is it includes 20 mic models and it's a mono only mic, so it won't do the stereo recording that the DLX will do. The other thing we need to talk about with the Sphere microphones is how you interface them with the rest of your system. They're actually standard microphones, but each one has two outputs. This means that they need to connect to a microphone preamp or an audio interface that has two XLR microphone level inputs with 48 volt phantom power. Any interface will work, any DAW will work. Now there are two benefits to using these with a Universal Audio Apollo interface. With an Apollo interface, you can use these as a unison plugin, which means you get very low latency and you have the choice of recording with the mic model included into the signal as you lay it down into your DAW. The other difference when you use an Apollo audio interface with the Sphere mics is you have access to two optional microphone packs that you can purchase, the Oceanway pack and the Bill Putnam pack. Those give you access to additional microphone models. Let's talk a little bit more about microphone preamps and the Sphere microphones. Now, as I mentioned, these have two diaphragms and they actually have two outputs each. So as I mentioned again, you need to run into two channels on a microphone preamp and it's essential that you match the level of those two channels on your preamp. Now with a digitally controlled preamp, for example, I was using an Audient Evo 16 here, you can digitally control that so the two channels are matched. If you have a preamp that doesn't have digital control, there's a calibration mode for these microphones that allows you to very easily set up the levels so they're precisely matched. That precise matching is essential when we're creating the different polar patterns with these microphones and also when we're dealing with some of the other characteristics that we can modify in the plug-in. One more thing about mic preamps, I own two of these microphones, two of the Townsend L22s actually, and I've found that a transparent microphone preamp is the best. If you use these with a colored preamp, what happens is you're coloring the signal coming from the microphone in, and then you're applying the microphone characteristic afterward, a little bit backward from the way it would work in the real world, if you will. So ideally, you'll use a transparent mic preamp. Again, any preamp will work, but I'd go for a transparent one when you have the choice. With all that out of the way, one of the big benefits with these microphones is that you can record your signal dry with no coloration, no models applied or anything, and then affect all those characteristics, change the polar pattern, change the mic model, all those things after the fact while you're mixing. It gives you tremendous flexibility. Of course, you could choose to track through the plugin and apply that characteristic of that mic model as you're tracking, but I like to record the dry signal and then work with the models afterward. 
So to demonstrate all this, we're gonna bring in a vocalist here. This is Annika Bovender from here in the marketing department at Sweetwater. She's gonna sing for us, and then we'll check things out in the plugin. Now that we've got our track recorded, let's take a look at the plugin. It's actually very easy to navigate, but we have a ton of control within this window. So when we open up, we're seeing our microphone here on the left. Now it's essential that we choose which microphone we're using. You choose your source mic here. And we were using the Sphere DLX to record Annika, and so that's the one I have selected. But if you're using an older Townsend Labs L22, you could select that, a Sphere LX, or whichever mic you're using. But it is essential that you choose the correct microphone, because as those models are applied, they're working their characteristics against that original source, and it needs to know the source. Of course, the thing everybody wants to hear is those different microphone models applied to the signal. So let's go ahead and check some of those out. I'm going to grab a set of headphones so I can listen along with you. We choose the mic models either by stepping through them here or by opening up the window. Now there are three different overall types of mic models, if you will. First, we have the custom types, which work on the microphone itself. So Sphere Direct is just the raw signal coming from the microphone. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans. They call the rising sun. So that's literally the direct signal coming right off the microphone straight into Pro Tools. Now if we choose Sphere Linear, they've created something that's never been done before with the directional condenser microphone, and that is that they've used DSP, the processing in the plugin, to actually create a completely linear response from the microphone from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Let's listen to that. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans They call the Sun. So a little bit different tone there from that microphone, and that might be useful if you're trying to use the straight sound from the microphone and you want a little bit more even response for, say, an acoustic instrument or something like that. Our third mode on this page is Sphere Diffuse, and this is interesting because it gives you flat response all the way around the microphone, 360 degrees. This is ideal if you're using the Sphere microphone as a room microphone, for example, because you'll get a very even, smooth response from all the ambience that you're capturing in the room. But of course, most of us are going to want to apply actual mic models to the sound that's coming from the Sphere DLX or the LX. Now we have two categories for those. There's large diaphragm condensers here, and as I mentioned, there's a total of 38 models with the DLX and a total of 20 models with the LX. So we've got, for example, a vintage U47. We can listen to the dry sound as we've been doing. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans. Now we can select the 47. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans. Here's a modern U87. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans. They call the rising sun. Here's a C800G. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans They call the rising sun A 251 Oh, there is a house in New Orleans They call the rising sun so you can hear we have a ton of tonal options when we start applying these microphone models to our signal. Everything from vintage tube mics like the 67, to a TLM-103, to a Bronner VM-1, to four different flavors of 414. There are a ton of microphones here. And the thing is that these are extremely precise models. Not only are they applying the modeling technology that gives you the tonal characteristics from on-axis signal, but they're also modeling the off-axis response, and just the way the microphone responds in general is very very, very authentic. And we also have a second category of microphones, and these are called hybrid. Now these microphones are not large diaphragm condensers, the original microphones aren't, so it's a little different approach here. We still have extremely accurate on-axis response. The off-axis response may not be quite as accurate as it is with the large condensers, but still sounds fantastic. And we can work with that as well, as we'll see. But in this category, we have small diaphragm condensers, like a 451. We have ribbon microphones, like a Coles 4038. We've got the Bayer 160, the Royer 121. We've got dynamic microphones. We've got uh, vintage RCA 77DX. Let's listen to a few of these. Here's that vintage 77. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans. They call the rising 
sun. Here's a 421 dynamic microphone. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans. They call the rising sun. The old standby 57 dynamic mic. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans. They call the rising sun. So again, a wide variety of different choices for applying different mic models to our signal. Let's go back to the large condensers, and I'm going to use the uh, large diaphragm 37 microphone, a Sony 37 microphone. We'll close out of this. You can see that microphone now appears in our window. We can also choose mics by scrolling back and forth this way. But you can see we now have options for working with that signal. For example, we can adjust the pattern. And nine different patterns are available with each microphone. Those that are in blue are the native patterns that are in the original microphone, but all these others are available to us as well because of those dual diaphragms inside the mic. So here's with cardioid. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans. We can make this an omni mic. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans. And we have some other options on this page as well. We have three different filter settings. Depending on the microphone that we have, they're gonna be very authentic to the original, but they allow us to control rumble and other things that we don't wanna have in our signal. So we've got three different positions, actually four positions, if you include off. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans. They call the rising sun. You can hear in that case, it's a high pass filter. We also can control the on and off axis positioning of the microphone after the fact, again, because of those dual diaphragms. And that's done with the axis control here. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans. They call the So you can see on the meter here that we're actually now 180 degrees behind the microphone. So we're actually in the null point. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans. They call the rising sun. We also can choose to reverse the microphone so it's as if we're singing into the back of the microphone. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans. We have control over the polarity of the signal and also we have an output level control. A useful control here is the proximity effect control. With a directional microphone, we get a boost in low frequencies as you get closer to the microphone. We can either dial that in or take some out if it's too much for our track with this control here. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans. They call the rising sun. The last thing to check out is a feature that's very useful for people who are recording at home and using reflection or isolation filters with their microphones. Those foam and other types of uh, filters that you set up around the microphone to isolate them from the room. Those were great for keeping ambience and room noise out of the microphone, but they do color the signal a bit. And we have a built-in function here called isosphere that allows us to remove that from the signal. So if you're using one of those reflection filters, there are a wide variety of different types out there, and you can choose the type that you have here from the list, everything from the SE reflection filter, we've got generic U-foam, we've got the Aston Halo, and so on. So you choose the one that you're using, enable it, and it'll remove those characteristics of that filter from the signal. It can really open up the sound for you if you're recording at home. So we've gone through most of the things on this page, but we're still barely getting started. If we click to dual, we have another feature of the Sphere system, and that's that we can actually use two microphones simultaneously. We can blend those microphones together, we can work between the two of them, we can take advantage of the composite sound that they generate, and you do that using the dual function. You can see we've opened that up here. So now we have two microphones, and we have a mix control for working with those two microphones. So in this case, we've got a 37 on the left. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans. We've got a new old stock 67 on the right. This is a 67 that was manufactured in the early 90s. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans. And we can blend those together in whatever degree we want, 50-50. Oh, there is 
a house in New Orleans. Now we can also affect the alignment of those two microphones by nature of the two diaphragms being inside the same head capsule, they're going to be perfectly phase aligned, but we can change that using the software. So we can move each microphone by up to two centimeters. So if we move one by two centimeters. Oh, there is a house in New Orleans. They call the rising sun. You can work with all those different possibilities of combining the two microphones in different degrees of phase. Now, of course, each microphone, we also have control over solo for each of those individual microphones. We can link the two so that the same microphone comes up on both sides. We have control over the on-off axis positioning for each of the two microphones. We can apply the filter to each of those two microphones and so on. So they're working as completely independent microphones, completely adjustable inside the plugin. Now we can also see when we go to this dual mode, we've expanded the proximity effect. Not only can we control the amount of proximity effect, we also have a proximity EQ control as well. That gives us even more flexibility. One other thing I want to take a look at here before we're finished, and that's off-axis correction. Now, any real microphone, if you will, will have a different frequency response as you go off-axis from the front of the microphone. So in front, you'll have the ideal frequency response for that mic. As you move around, you may see dips and peaks that are 16 dB up or down or even more than that. So off-axis correction actually allows the plug-in to go in and optimize that off-axis frequency response and make it smoother. Now, this makes any ambience that's captured in the room sound better because it's smoother, it's a more accurate pickup of that room ambience. But it also allows us to control the amount of bleed we're getting from sources that are off-axis from the mic. And we have a couple different settings for that here. So we'll turn on off-axis correction, and now we can change the pattern, and this actually overrides the pattern that we have set at the top of the window. And you can see it ranges from Omni all the way up to figure of eight. We can also set the distance for the on-axis capture as well as the off-axis capture. Now this allows us to control the amount of signal that's bleeding in from around the room if you have another source you're trying to eliminate and so on. And that works in concert with this mode switch right here in the middle. We have four different modes. First up, we have free field. Now this is gonna give us the most off-axis rejection. It's great if you're close miking a signal and you don't want any bleed from external sources or you don't want too much room ambience. When we move to diffuse field one, we get smoother off-axis response, but we're still rejecting quite a bit of the signal. When you move to diffuse field two, we've got smoother off-axis response and we're allowing more of the room to get in. This gives us more of a room recording kind of a sound or lets more of the ambience in. Finally, we have auto, and this is useful if you have multiple sources playing at the same time. It's gonna go in and try and automatically correct for those off-axis anomalies. One tip for you, off-axis correction and proximity effect can be very useful if you have a performer who's going on and off the microphone as they're singing or playing. This can allow you to compensate for some of those changes. You can use automation, in fact, to do that. So you can really get in there and sculpt the signal to maintain consistency, even if your performer isn't staying on mic. Now, one final thing we should talk about, we've been looking at the Sphere plugin here, but there's a second plugin that comes with the Sphere DLX, and that is the Sphere 180. And this allows us to do stereo recording using a single DLX microphone. So let's go ahead and switch over to that. So you can see this looks similar to when we were in dual mode, but it's actually a little bit different. We've linked the two sides and you can see they're positioned here as sort of a figure eight pattern, but by working with the off axis response, we can actually align this to create, for example, 90 degrees stereo recording. So if we put this in front of, say, an acoustic guitar, we'd get a 90 degree pickup pattern from in front of those because of the way this off axis is set up for the two microphones. We have control over the panning, so we can emphasize one side or the other. We also have control over the stereo width. So this gives us a great option if you wanna try capturing a stereo signal with one microphone. It's gonna be a coincident capture because those two capsules are aligned completely inside the microphone, but it does give you that nice stereo spread for something like an acoustic guitar with one microphone or as a room mic as well. Great option for that type of recording. So as you can see, the Sphere system is incredibly powerful. Whether you go for the Sphere DLX with 38 different microphone models and the option for stereo recording, or the LX at a lower price point, smaller, easier to place, and 20 microphone models, you can't go wrong. You've got a ton of tonal options and so much flexibility. As I mentioned earlier, I have two of the original Townsend L22 microphones. They're fantastic on just about any source you might want to put them in front of, and they give you so many options for tailoring your signal exactly the way you want to hear it. You definitely want to check this out. This is the new Universal Audio Sphere DLX and the Sphere LX. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater.
Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at Sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.